What's up everybody? I'm Dreadful Goose. I'm here at Murder the Mix Studios and today we're going to be talking about how to select the best recording software for your home or professional studio project. Let's get it. So first of all, no one really calls them recording softwares. You may hear people say DAW or DAW. So what does that mean? DAW or DAW is short for Digital Audio Workstation. And we use these DAWs or DAWs in conjunction with audio interfaces. The audio interface allows us to capture the signal and convert it so that our computers can read it. And the DAW or Digital Audio Workstation is where we go to manipulate and edit and cut and paste and do all the changes that we need to do to make the final product. So let's talk about the elephant in the room. If you've been doing your research or you've been asking people, chances are the first thing that you've been told is to get Pro Tools. Pro Tools is an amazing DAW and it has been the industry standard since it first came out in 1991. However, in my opinion, I don't think that it is the best DAW for everyone. Back in the day, you can make the argument that Pro Tools was the best sounding DAW on the planet. You couldn't argue with the fact that it sounded great and it allowed you to do a whole bunch of intricate little things that you couldn't do with other DAWs or digital audio workstations. They also introduced the concept of Pro Tools HD, which sounded even better than the regular Pro Tools, which was already good, but the HD was even better. You can go on and on about this stuff and you can do some more research on that if you like. But these days, there are so many amazing DAWs due to the technology that we have now that allow you to get just as good, if not better results than Pro Tools. So before you listen to some guy on the internet, ironically, right? Before you listen to some guy on the internet, or your friends telling you to get Pro Tools, check this stuff out. This is what I think is important when it comes to selecting your digital audio workstation. The first thing you need to do is scour the internet and take a look at the visuals of each one of the DAWs that you have on your radar. Why is this important? Because if you're intimidated just by opening the damn software, you've already lost. You're gonna make the, the whole learning process ridiculously hard, and it's already hard as it is to learn how to be a good engineer. So you're gonna make it really, 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 really hard to be inspired to even create anything. And number two, you're more likely to just give up because a lot of people do. I know many people who are so intimidated by opening their, their DAW or digital audio workstation that they just are like, you know what, screw it. I don't, I don't even want to deal with this. Like, I'm, I'm just done with it. I got several buddies of mine who are just like, yo, Goose, like, I, I just can't deal with this crap anymore. And I'm like, listen, I will help you. Let me show you. And they're just like, no, I, I don't want to deal with it anymore. Like, you know, it's, it's just too much. Again, maybe had they selected another doll, they might have had a much better experience. Think about it. If you don't even like looking at this thing, you're definitely not gonna wanna work on it for hours or days or weeks or months on end. Like, you've already sh shot yourself in the foot. The user interface has gotta be quick and easy to navigate. Because again, if you're sitting there, me as someone who does this on a professional level, I wanna sit there and just get stuff done. And I wanna get it done as fast as I know I can get it done. So if I'm sitting there and struggling with how do I figure this out? How do I move this? How do I... It's just not gonna be a good experience for me. This one is a big, 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 big thing to consider. Number two, the workflow. When you're starting out, you're not really gonna care too much about this stuff, but this is something that's gonna affect you later down the line. Eventually, if you put the time in and you dedicate yourself to becoming proficient at, you know, being somewhat of a recording engineer, whether it be in a hobbyist level or on a professional studio level, eventually you will get better. And when you get better, you wanna make sure that what you're using can keep up with you. And also keep this in mind, 
Someone like me who does it on a professional level, I have clients and clients don't want to wait around forever to get their product. Nobody does, especially when you've already paid for it or put a deposit on it. Like you want your stuff roughly around the time that the engineer says that they're going to be able to deliver it. So me as an engineer or you as a hobbyist, maybe you have a band who, again, maybe you're not doing it on a professional level, but you know, the band has certain things that they want to get done on a timely basis. You don't want to have to be the guy who says, oh, like just a couple of more days, a couple of more weeks, a couple of more months. <laughs> you don't, you, like I've seen it happen, trust me. You don't want to be that guy. You want to be able to work quick and get stuff done. Number three, your doll needs to be able to keep up with all the current technology that is available today. And what do I mean by this? Specifically, I'm talking about plugins. Your DAW needs to be able to keep up and run the latest plugins. These days, people are using mostly 64-bit plugins, and there's nothing worse than finding out about a really cool plugin, and you download it, and you go to load it up in your DAW, and then your DAW says, sorry, it's not compatible. Every engineer, whether they be amateur or professional, they use some sort of plugins. Everybody does it, it's not cheating, it's literally just something that's gonna make your sound better. It's gonna enhance the sound of whatever music or audio work that you have to create. So if you can't run some of the best plugins, you're already at a disadvantage. And on top of that, you'd be missing out on a whole bunch of fun. It's, it's really cool to dive knee deep into this stuff and just experiment with what different plugins can do. Uh, although, again, it's not best to rely on plugins to make your stuff sound good. There's a lot of other things that go into being a good audio engineer, but it is fun to experiment with different plugins. Like I said, if you stick to it, you are going to get better and you're gonna to want to do things faster and you wanna work more comfortably. So you need to make sure that the DAW that you are going to work with has some cool features. I may have mentioned earlier that most of the DAWs that are out these days are really, really good, and they kind of almost all do the same thing. But certain DAWs were created with certain types of users in mind, so they may have some features that another DAW may not. Yo, so after all that BS I was just saying, what do I think is the best DAW? What do I use here in my professional recording studio? I use Ableton Live. The reason why I use Ableton is because number one, it was so easy to learn in the beginning stages. And usually when you learn on one specific DAW, you kind of stay with that DAW forever. I had such a great experience when I was learning how to use Ableton that I was just like, wow, this is freaking phenomenal. And I had already previous experience with dealing with Pro Tools. But when I found out about Ableton, I was just like, whoa, this is, this is great. I, like many people, was recommended Pro Tools and I had some experience with it, like not too much. I was still a rookie at the time and I just didn't really like it. I didn't really like Pro Tools. I thought it was a pain in the ass. It was just so much easier than Pro Tools. Like it, it literally was just like, oh, I can do this like this. Whereas with Pro Tools, I was like sitting there trying to navigate and trying to figure out this, like where's the button for this? Super, super easy. The workflow on Ableton for me is super fast once you learn all the, the, the shortcuts. The workflow is so fast. And as far as features, I think the features are great. I'm actually really excited for the new Ableton Live 11. I'm not sure if it's out yet. I actually have to go check because if it is, I'm buying that thing now, <laughs> um, but I'm actually really excited about the new Ableton Live 11 because it has cool features that I don't have in the 10. Now I've mentioned several times in this video, home or professional use. And this is very important because some people, number one, don't have the money to spend on some of these DAWs because they can be expensive. And number two, some people just want to do basic things whether they have the money or not. They don't, want, they don't want all these crazy, you know, things. They just want very simple, very basic, get them from point A to point B. I use the Ableton suite, the full suite, which is meant for people like myself 
who use it in professional settings. But Ableton also has a version of it called the Ableton Live Lite. The reason I like the Lite version is that it gives people a very simplified version of what I have and it introduces them to a whole new doll that they may not have heard of before because again, most people will still say Pro Tools to this day. Um, and what I like about the Live Lite is that it comes with something that many of you may already have, a Focusrite interface. Focusrite makes some of the most popular interfaces in the world and, and some of the best in my opinion. And a lot of them come with a free version of Ableton Live Lite. So if you have a Focusrite interface, I really strongly encourage you to go to the Focusrite website, register your interface, download the drivers, and do all the stuff you gotta do, and download the free version of Ableton Live Lite. Give it a go, and hopefully you really like it. Now I'm not saying that you have to get the same DAW as me by any means, but I did wanna share with you what I use and why I use it. Remember, selecting a DAW is a very personal and very important choice because everyone is different and depending on the choice that you make or the DAW that you select, that could have a very big impact as to whether you are someone like me who decides to eventually end up becoming a studio engineer. Uh, it can make the difference between you, you know, just hating the whole process of audio engineering, which is, it, it shouldn't be because it's actually very fun. It's very hard at the beginning, but it's also very rewarding and very fun. So again, a quick summary. These are the things that you really need to worry about when selecting your DAW. The look, the user interface, the features, the workflow, and the compatibility. Before I sign out, let me know if you'd like to see me make a similar video talking about how to select the best audio interface for your needs. As always guys, thank you so very much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and follow all my social media links down below. Peace.